So there's something then we call tunable spars um, or shifting gear spars um, stuff. And here you see what is the density and the decoder rank. How does it increase? And we have here a nice plot about the good put. Now, good put and throughput are two different things, right? Good put means really how much can you bring through. The decoding speed is one way, but how good, how valuable the decoding speed is, is stated by the good put. And here are the dependent packets. And let's take the full RLNC, right, without sparsity. This is here, and we have um, there's another one uh, down here, right? Um, that's correct, isn't it? No, sorry. Um, the full RNC, sorry, is here, and you see the good put is not so much, and, but the dependency of the packets is not that large. Now, if you take non-zero TSN of feedback, which means uh, one of the things where we can really de um, tell the other side how much sparsity we want, if we um, put more de uh, or less density in the code, then we need more dependent packets. But the good put is still going up. And here you have a very good behavior, right? You can state it here and say, okay, now I have a little bit less than 200 megabytes per second, but nearly no extra dependent packet. If you can live with some extra packet, like six, eight extra more, then you can already get 100 megabytes per second more. So this is a little bit, if you deal with complexity, adding this is quite a nice feature. If you are up here, for example, um, by, um, by making it even less sparse than, uh, or more sparse, sorry, then you would double the number of dependent packets, but you don't get any uh, increase in the, uh, in the good put, right? You will see a benefit on the throughput, on the decoding speed, but not really on the good put. Okay, there are some values. Um, we put you up there. These are the tunable sparse factors from 170 megabyte per second up to 410 megabyte per second. Um, compared to the standard RLNC, how, which only has 50, right? So adding a little bit is giving a speed up of a three, which is quite impressive. And um, the problem now is what happens, this is just encoding, decoding, right? What happens with the recoding? When you have a sparse code and you start to recode, would you have an understanding what happens in this case? First of all, is it possible? Yeah, why not, right? I mean, you just take the packets and by chance we had a lot of zeros. So why should the recoder refuse to? But what happens with the code? Anybody? Maybe if you are not careful, you get more zeros than you wanted because if, if your recoding matrix has 90% zeros and the input already has 90% zeros, then you end up with 99% zeros already. Yeah, uh, but it is the other way around. So if you have a very sparse code and you recode all the time, the density is increasing because it has elements. So when you have only packet one and packet three combined here and packet four and packet seven on the other side and you recode, suddenly the packet has all four elements. So you have seen P1, P3, P4, P7 in one packet. But only if your local recoding matrix uh, doesn't have non-zero elements. Yeah, the only thing is there you would, if you say uh, the element would be for full packet, right? If you say there for the full packet we take this, then you will leave a, get, get it in or out. But when you consider this, then you will um, lose the sparsity of the code, right? So there is some, um, something we have to at least take care when we do recoding and sparsity. Right? Normally it's an end-to-end -end thing.